Hello everyone, you're listening to Lipstick and Leather. In person with me right now is none other than Damon Johnson of Alice Cooper's band. How's it going today, Damon? Going great, guys. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, making the drive. We are very, very excited to be here. It's the, the highlight of the month, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's the highlight of my month as well, to be in Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> With some of the songs on Along Came a Spider, the co-writes that you did, not making the album, are any of them going to be on your new solo album release or any other Alice Cooper co-writes going to make it? Those songs are absolutely going to show up on the next Alice Cooper record. Uh, we were just discussing that with Alice last week, and there's a, some of those songs that... There was just a large quantity of material that got submitted for Along Came a Spider, and it's it's a good problem to have to have too many songs and now that uh, he's getting ready to do a new a follow-up to that he's revisited a lot of those ideas and uh, kind of came back to the band and said guys these songs are amazing you know and he's written some rewritten a few lyrics written some new lyrics etc so uh, yeah those will those are going to show up right on now does alice cooper sing any background vocals or any lines or just harmonica on the version of generation landslide yeah i uh Man, I'm so excited about that. Well, when I went to Phoenix to record his harmonica part, uh, initially that was really all I was going to get because uh, I love to sing that song. And uh, I can't wait for everybody to hear it, man, because uh, you know, that's a song I've loved my whole life, really. And, uh, but while we were there, Coop was just sort of singing to himself, uh, especially the, the line in the chorus. So he was gracious enough to... Uh, to add that in there and uh, some of my kids have heard the whole record and I think that's their favorite song just because Alice has some vocals on there you know so it's pretty cool man really exciting for me and and just an honor to uh, you know to have him uh, you know have him on there it's a very cool thing Mm -hmm. on the topic of covers I know in your previous bands you've done lots of cover tunes what about maybe a cover album down the road you know what? Um, it's funny you say that. I've been talking to the guys here in the Alice Cooper Band um, about that very thing. I've always wanted to do a, a real proper Thin Lizzy tribute record. Uh, literally nothing more than just a labor of love, you know, on a tip of the hat to those guys because they're such a huge influence for me. And to have Jimmy and Carrie and Chuck play on there would, would be a lot of fun. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, man, there's just so many great songs from all kinds of bands that I, to this day I get really excited about. And it's always fun to play those songs because uh, um, I love to see the reaction of the audience because you can see them recognize different things. And, and, you know, there's always somebody that loves it as much as, as I do. So it's, it's a lot of fun. On the topic of the Thin Lizzy tribute album, back in 96 there was talk of one to be released that was going to feature Mike Inez, Dave Abrazis, yourself, and different fo- vocalists, and to be produced by Dwayne Barron. Whatever happened? Did any of the work get done on this project? You know what we did? Uh, that's, that's pretty wild you even bring that up, man, because that's been so long ago. Um, yeah, I remember working with Dwayne and... Um, Dave was on there. We did a session together, and then I know I saw Inez shortly after that, and he had done some overdubs. And I think, unfortunately, that's one of those projects that just kind of ran out of funding. It was getting, you know, it was getting hard to get everybody together. And um, I remember uh, one of the other guys involved from a production level. He kind of changed companies, production companies, and it was just kind of a mix-up there, and it just sort of slipped through the cracks. And um, there were some other tribute things coming out at that time, and I think they felt like they might get a little lost in the traffic, and I understand what, what that's like. I mean, the people that love Thin Lizzy are diehards mm-hmm. and, and put them in high regard, but there's still a lot of people that know very little about them. So, you know, it, it's easy to take second chair to like an ACDC tribute or a Zeppelin tribute. There's always right. a lot of those. So, uh, But that was a good time, and I remember, you know, the three or four songs that I played on, it was just... So much fun, and to get to play with Abrazis and Mike is, you know, those guys are first class, great, great players. Well, I love your version of Borderline. Thank you, man. I, you know, that's a song that always meant a lot to me. And you know, the thing about Lizzie is that they played all kinds of styles. It was they weren't just a hard rock band. In general, that's what they were known for. But my favorite songs were deep cuts on the albums and. Uh, all sorts of like folk influenced things, a lot of Celtic stuff, you know, you know, being from Ireland. So um, Borderline was 
sort of like this amazing, almost like a Dylan Van Morrison song to me. And uh, to this day, I get a lot of compliments about that version on, on Dust. So, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I kind of accomplished my goal of spreading the news about not just that song, but about, you know, Phil and his songwriting talent. Definitely. <clears throat> With Motor Belly having lots of leftover material, will the band record a new album, and do you think using Cunning instead will make the cut? Wow! Ryan has really done his homework here, kids. He knows what's <laughs> happening. Um, you know, I just talked to Johnny. Uh, Johnny Blade is, is my partner in that, and uh, such a prolific, creative brain that guy is. And uh, the status of the Motor Belly right now is actually very alive and well. I encouraged him to go ahead and put a version of the band together and go out and play, even though I'm on the road with Alice, they should still be playing dates, you know? And, you know, because it helps spread the news about this first CD. It keeps the kind of the thing out there and working. You know, I, I compare the Motor Belly. What it is for me is what I think, I don't know if you're hip to Josh Homme from uh, Queens of the Stone, Stone Age. He's got that Eagles of Death Metal mm -hmm. thing. But that's what the Motor Belly is for me. Um, you know, it's, it's a real creative partnership between Johnny and I and then my old friend on the drums Michael Rollins but you know it's like I don't want to hold those guys hostage to where they can't go out and do dates unless I'm there because mm -hmm. I'm I'm starting to get a reputation for wearing a lot of hats so <laughs> <laughs> so I was glad that they were excited when I called them with that idea so I've got another buddy of mine playing guitar and uh, as a matter of fact they've got three shows that they're about to do next month uh, down south down in Alabama I think one in Atlanta so uh yeah, man, we'd love to make another recording very soon. And uh, Use Cunning instead, I think, would be a, a, great, <laughs> a great song mm -hmm. for the next record. Now, will the Brother Kane version of Black Cloud ever be released? You know what, probably not. Um, you know, that was definitely kind of a B-side on the Wishpool sessions. Was it the Wishpool? Yeah. Was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Wishpool took on sort of its own statement. Uh, kind of by accident in the beginning and then once we got towards the finish line and we could all kind of see how it was shaping up it became very clear that there were some songs that would be better left off of that record so that it was a little more cohesive so um, yeah I mean I was glad that the guys in the motor belly wanted to play that and I think it really kind of fits that vibe it's a little more it's a little raw mm -hmm. a, little, a little more punk influence you know there wasn't very much there wasn't a lot of punk influence really on any of the Brother King stuff as far as the things that we released. Right, you know, I, I think, think of songs like maybe Hung on a Rope off the Seeds record. Mm -hmm. um, maybe The Crow Flies on Wishpool, but that was just so heavy. You know, that was a song that we, we wrote with Kelly. And uh, it was a little more grunge, I think, than, than punk. But, uh, but I love that energy. And again, that's what the motor belly represents for me. You know, anything that's kind of, you know, white stripes, Bad Brains, Fear, you know, some of that stuff that I dug, you know, once I got into, like, junior college and things like mm -hmm. that, the motor bellies would get home for that. Right on. Will the unreleased Damn Yankees al album ever be released? Very probably not. Mm. Um, you know, I've talked about that before. I mean, that was such a great experience for me because it was like, um, you know, I was I was the, the student surrounded with many teachers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I give John Kladner, the, the legendary A&R man, a lot of gratitude, you know, for, for calling me about being a part of that. Um, I mean, he must have really had a lot of confidence in me to ask me to come in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I stay in touch with all those guys, every one of them, man. Ted, Tommy, Jack, Michael, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that we gave it a shot. We definitely put a lot of time and energy into it. Um, I haven't listened to that in a long time, and, and several people have asked me about it recently. I need to, well, I'm, I'm getting ready to move my family from Birmingham to Nashville. Oh, okay. And uh, my stuff is just scattered everywhere. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? If you put a gun to my head and said, okay, you have to find that album, I don't, I don't know if I could do that right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> so, but I, if I can get my hands on it, I'd, I'd love to hear it again. Definitely. Check it out. Well, I'd love to hear "Don't Say Goodbye," and even though I heard those are two of pretty cool tunes off there. Yeah, "Don't Say uh, Don't Say Goodbye." Um, there was another song called uh, "Shine On." Yes. Not to be confused with "Anvil Shine On." Really great song. Um, there was another song that I remember Ted saying. It was kind of a street fighting man kind of Stones vibe. That was uh, 
that was pretty cool. Yeah. Got all the titles right there. It's probably one of them. <laughs> oh, wow. There they are. That's it. Yeah, even though that's a, that's a track that I actually sang. Mm. I sang that uh, Give Nobody Nothing. That was the Ted song. Uh, we Are The Ones, that was a really good song that Jack and I wrote together. That song made it onto a television show. That, really? Um, I don't know if you guys have that in Canada, but it was one of those, uh, I can't, maybe it was a Spike TV show about the, what is it, Dog the Bounty Hunter? Yeah, yeah. You have that? Yeah, man. They, they played that a lot on that show. Like huh. It became almost like a recurring thing. Yeah, check that out. Um, yeah, man, good stuff. And then we did an awesome cover of Sunshine of Your Love. That was... Uh, it was pretty awesome. I know. I know Ted loved that. You know, being a big Clapton fan, so mm -hmm. that was fun for him. Well, I know for a little bit there was actually five members of Damn Yankees. Was there any rehearsal footage together out there anywhere? Um, you know, I think there's a little footage maybe Jack has of Ted, myself, uh, Jack, and Michael. Uh, I don't recall. I, I remember when we recorded in New York. I think Tommy had a video camera. Probably just getting like some random. You know, random stuff. Um, I should ask him about that. That'd yeah. be pretty cool to have. Uh -huh. um, you know, I hadn't even thought about that in such a long time. And, and just last month, my wife put, uh, she found a, a, a JPEG of, of a band photo we took. And she put that on my Facebook page. And uh, pretty cool, man. A lot of people commented about that. And, uh, you know, again, it was just a great experience. Definitely. I was, I was pretty fortunate to uh, hang out with those guys. Even with some of the themes and seeds being darker, I felt the album as a whole had a message of hope to look at things on the bright side and you will be successful type message. Do you agree with me? I, I agree with that. I definitely do, uh, certainly up to a point. Um, you know, I just remember that, that a lot of the songs kind of took on that theme as we were struggling as a band. You know, we were trying to, still trying to find out who we were and we were doing that at a time where, um, you know, the whole rock music thing had really gotten turned upside down. And, you know, even to this day, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that I ever felt like we were a part of any specific genre. That's very true. You know, we weren't really an alternative band because we had a lot of mainstream influence. But we weren't just a blues band mm -hmm. because we, you know, we were, we were influenced by a lot of people on the radio and things like that. Currently, you know, the yeah, Pearl Jams yeah. and the Nirvanas and you know, Soundgarden and people like that. Um... You know, and, and of course, we, we came after the whole sort of 80s, you know, 80s Sunset Strip thing. Mm -hmm. We weren't a part of that either. So, we, like I say, it, it, that, that definitely reflected kind of what we were searching for yes. as a band. Well, I love how all three albums sounded so different from each other, too. That's a rare thing to find. Well, I loved it. I don't know if the record company loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, definitely kept, kept us from getting, uh, it, it, was never, it, it was never boring musically, you know. We are always making stuff up as we went along. With As Fools Shine On, the video getting radio and airplay, why did Virgin not opt to shoot a video for Breadmaker or Voice of Eugenia afterwards? Um, you know, good I just, question. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I just remember that being a time where they, they were very numbers oriented. You know, if they spent X number of dollars to shoot a video and then the album didn't sell X number of units, they would pretty much just kind of sign off on it. And I, I remember there was talk of maybe doing one for Breadmaker had it charted higher. You know, they, they, they're always telling you stuff, man. I mean, really, in retrospect, I'm almost glad we didn't shoot those videos because that's just, that's just more money that, you know, the band is responsible for paying back a good, a good chunk of that. And, uh, you know, I mean, we were... We were significantly in debt to that label financially, and you know, on paper, still are to this day. So, mm -hmm. um, as as many fans as we had, as much as I still love those songs, um, you know, it would just. There's a lot of people that would argue, certainly from Virgin Records, they'd be like, "Well, you know, we're not going to re-release that stuff. We're not. That's, you know, so many. All the albums are out of print now. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that's why it's been tough to." for people to find those. Is that one of the reasons none of the videos are on the new Brother Kane DVD? Yeah, we didn't, we just couldn't get clearance from Virgin on it. We thought about just doing it anyway, you know, kind of daring them to come after us. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, man, that's just, I mean, people, you can find all that stuff on YouTube anyway. Yeah. All the videos are out there, so. Um, 
we just kept it focused on that live footage and then the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm.